going to show you how to make strawberry tea, how to preserve your strawberries so that you can make strawberry tea all winter long. Um, strawberries are high in vitamin A and vitamin C, which makes it a good tea to drink during the winter to treat or prevent colds. Um, the leaves are high in a lot of trace minerals. Um, they're very high in potassium and they're high in calcium, which makes it also a good drink for um, people who are nursing. It helps the production of milk. Um, it's also good for your stomach. It helps with a lot of stomach issues and digestion. This is very simple. Most people make their strawberry tea with just um, the leaves. I like to add some strawberry to it just to give it more taste. Strawberry tea is extremely delicate. Um, it's sweet and fruity. It's a very good drink. And all I'm doing right now is I'm just cutting my strawberries into very thin slices. The thinner the better. And you can dry these in the oven at about 130 degrees or you can put them in the sun, you put them under a sheet of plastic or cover them with a veil, anything just to keep the bugs off. Like I said, the thinner you, you cut them, the quicker they'll dry. And But if you have a food dehydrator or racks, you can just set them out under lamps or just in the open air. As they dry, it smells so good. It's going to make your house smell so good. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of these up real quick and then I'll get back with you. Now I'm done with um, the strawberries. I sliced them up nice and thin. Um, we're going to let these dry pretty much overnight. It's going to probably take the whole night because strawberries, like most berries, have a lot of water in them so we're going to have to make sure that they're completely dried. Um, we'll check them a couple of times throughout the night, make sure they're not over drying, but it, sh it should take the whole night. Don't be surprised once they are dried at how much volume you lose, because like I said, they are mostly water. But that tiny little shriveled up piece that you're going to end up with, if you taste it, you'll see it's extremely concentrated flavor, and you can even taste the concentration of the vitamin C that's going to be in those little slices. Um, remember that we tend to think of tea as just something that we use to enhance our meals, but originally tea was a way to preserve the nutritional value of foods when they're out, you know, into the off season, out of season. Like I said, strawberries are high in vitamin A and C. That's very good for the treatment of colds. And uh, during the winter, these drinks would be used to help to boost the immune system when there's not a lot of food available that is very high in these particular nutrients. Um, you can do this with peaches, works just the same. I'll be doing that too, but I won't show you because it's the exact same procedure um, to make peach tea uh, or pretty much any fruit or berry you can use. Um, I'll be drying the leaves tomorrow. I'm going to dry them separately because I'm using a dehydrator and they'll be drying at two different temperatures. If you want to dry them open air, of course, you can dry them at the same time. But I'm going to let these dry overnight and we'll come back in the morning and check on them and see how they're doing and if they're ready we'll go harvest some leaves and dry those so I'll show you how to do all of that. Our strawberries have dried overnight. They're nice and thin. Um, I'm going to put these in a jar and leave the lid off of them for probably another day or so and shake it around pretty regularly to make sure that they're completely dry. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a mason jar Put all these little chips in the jar and then we're going to use these racks to dry the leaves that I harvested. You want to use young growth leaves. You can use any leaf but you'll get a better taste if you use um, the younger smaller leaves. It might be tempting to pick the big ones just because it'll be less work and you have to pick less of them. but your tea will taste a lot better and there will be a lot more nutrient in smaller leaves. You want to clean them thoroughly. Uh, make sure when you put them out that there's no bug bites or mildew or anything on it. You want to make sure they're completely clean. And then we're going to dry these. It won't take nearly as long as the berries. Okay, I've already collected all of my strawberries 
if you remember yesterday I told you that you would lose a lot of volume. We sliced a large, you know, heaping bowl of strawberries and ended up with slightly over half a jar of dry. But it is extremely concentrated. It actually tastes pretty good. It's a little bit like a fruit roll up. And there's a lot of flavor in there. So this is going to work very nicely. Now, once your leaves are clean, I'm going to de stem them. Throw them on there, checking each one for bug bites or blight, anything like that. Once all your beer leaves are on, we're going to turn it on and it won't take very long. Um, leaves, I've never dried leaves in the oven just because they dry so easily on their own just in the open air. So you can do this open air. Um, what I used to do before I had a food dehydrator was I would get some veil material and make like a tube and drop them, like sew it up on all ends except for one end, drop them in from that end, um, shake it around a little bit, get them kind of spread out and just set it outside, you know, on top of something so that the air could float all the way around it and uh, the veil would keep the bugs off, it would keep them from flying away, it would keep everything safe and in place while the air was able to flow around it and they'd dry really, really quick. So that works really well, you can do that. I just have, I have this and so it makes it a lot faster, so that's what I'm going to use. But the veil works fine. You can use the veil inside as well and um, just put a fan close to it or underneath it so that it can get a lot of air and shake it uh, pretty regularly so that it dries evenly. And I'm going to go ahead and finish plucking these and then we'll put them drying. Something you do want to watch out for when you're cleaning your leaves are slugs. I don't know what it is about strawberries and slugs, but they love it and there are always a lot of slugs. So you want to make sure that everything is clean before you start dehydrating because you don't want to dry up slugs with your teeth. And we're going to put all four of these trays drying and when they're done, we're going to crush them all up together with the berries and store them in our jars. And these have been drying for most of the day. They're ready to store now. You want them to be dry enough to easily just crumble in your fingers. Um, I'm going to crush all of these and then I'm going to use about half of these berries in this jar and half of the leaves in this jar. So I'll end up with two jars that are half berry, half leaf. Um, I suppose you could do this with a food processor, just a few quick blends and it probably would chop it up. I don't know, I've never done it that way, I always crumble them by hand. But basically that's it. You just, as long as they're dry enough to easily crumble, you're going to crumble it and you'll, that'll be your tea leaves. You can either put it in a silk bag, um, a tea ball, or you can just brew them directly, steeped into your, your tea. And for a few days I'm going to take this jar and I'm going to run it sideways shake it and spin it just to make sure that all of the air can get around everything just just in case something's not completely dry I'm going to continue to let it dry for a few days before I mix them and then we'll have our strawberry tea